Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be tackling a topic that is frequently discussed on forums and other social media and it's going to be you get a knock on your door at 3 a.m. What do you do? So essentially we're going to be tackling this in a couple different parts and uh, the first part of course that you guys are watching right now is going to be up on my YouTube and Rumble channels for everyone. And then in part two it's going to be a Mug Club exclusive where we walk through some scenarios and sort of just tips on to how to tackle those scenarios uh, depending on what the scenario actually develops into. Um, so first and foremost why would somebody be knocking on your door at 3 a.m.? Well, there's a few reasons. So um, the most likely one though is, is very important is one that I think a lot of people don't think about all that often. The most likely person to be knocking on your door at 3 a.m. is a local police officer. So uh, a lot of different reasons why that would be. Either, let's say you park outside, uh, somebody, you went to bed, somebody stole your car, the police recovered your car, and they just showed up to tell you that your car has been recovered even though you don't know it's been stolen, right? So that's one scenario. Another scenario is uh, somebody broke into your neighbor's house, they're knocking on your door to see if you heard anything, if you have security camera footage they can use, whatever the case may be. So there's a litany of scenarios where the police would show up and knock on your door at 3 a.m. if you have a kid who's been out doing crazy stuff, Lord knows what. Um, but that is definitely the most likely person to be knocking on your door at 3 a.m. Certainly, if it does not fall into the category of law enforcement and it's not somebody that you called who's knocking on your door at 3 a.m., things are gonna be a little bit different just depending on how that goes. So uh, if we think about some things to think about when you're uh, setting up your home for these sorts of uh, unlikely but still very plausible scenarios. Some things that you could have that are an advantage, something like this, frosted glass. So some of you guys may have watched my previous video where someone tried to break into this house and uh, we added frosted glass after that. It was a lesson learned. But one thing that does is it makes it a little bit harder for somebody to see in and a little bit easier for you to identify a person who's outside without exactly giving away all your information on the inside. Obviously the same is true with a peephole here. It allows you to see it. And of course it is 2023 as of when we're recording this. So having a camera on the outside, which this house does have, um, an ability to communicate with somebody on the outside without having to open your door, always is going to be something that I would recommend. So assuming you don't have the ability to communicate through your home security system, you know, if it is police officers and they look like police officers, they're in uniform, they're identifying themselves as such, and you don't trust it for whatever reason, because there certainly has been no shortage of folks dressing up as police officers to commit crimes. That's unfortunately all too common these days. Uh, the first thing I would recommend is call Call your local police department and verify if officers have been dispatched to that location or not. It's pretty simple. That happens relatively quickly. Um, and then at that point, you can choose to either engage with them or not engage with them, which we'll get to here in just a second. If it is someone you do not recognize, uh, let's say, for example, it is a woman screaming. She looks disheveled, like you know someone just tried to harm her and she's asking for help. That's kind of where we get into part number two. A lot of you guys will say, don't answer it. And I totally get that. And I'm not gonna say that's the wrong answer at all. That definitely could be the right answer. But a lot of us who are protectors, who want to help people just inherently have a uh, desire to want to open the door in that type of scenario. So um, some things to discuss if we're going to do that right um, in both scenarios. So first off is going to be firearm. Right, so I would recommend no matter what, if you're answering your door in America to do so with a firearm, uh, there's really not a whole lot of reason not to. Again, we're just gonna pretend like you don't have a security system, which if you do and you can communicate that way, 100% do that first, always. Um, but if you're answering the door with a firearm, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, if you guys follow me on social media, you guys have probably seen a lot of different examples of that. And uh, many of them, most of them, involve police um, simply because of the things we're going to be talking about, which is what prompted me to do this video. So um, answering the door with a firearm can cause a response from the person on the other side, depending on where you live. Uh, if you live in rural Montana, it's probably going to be seen as completely normal. If you live in an apartment in downtown Boston, it's probably going to create a very different reaction in that scenario. So you sort of have to feel that out. So what firearm should you go with, right? 
getting into what firearm to choose, of course, on the internet, folks are generally going to say that in that scenario, they're gonna want a long gun on them. They're gonna want a shotgun or a semi-automatic rifle of some sort, AR-15, AK-47. And in no way would I say that's wrong, but one thing I would say that is that if you're going to do that, if you're going to answer the door with that type of firearm, I definitely recommend having a sling on it so that way you can secure it to your body in case you need the administrative use or non-lethal use rather, uh, of your hands. So that is one thing I would recommend. Now, if we're talking about law enforcement, I would not recommend using a long gun when you answer the door or having a long gun when you answer the door. And the reason for that is law enforcement officers have varying levels of competency, varying levels of training, and you never know if they're gonna have a good day or a bad day on the job, just like anybody else. And uh, if you answer the door with a firearm that is visible, and obviously if you have a long gun with you, it will be visible. Uh, there have been a ton of examples where police will engage that individual. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Recently, I believe this was last year, a video that we're gonna roll in here, uh, police were going door to door uh, because of a, a call for a noise disturbance, looking for information as to where the noise was coming from. They knocked on a gentleman's door. He answered the door with a pistol in his hand and the officer shot him. Um, I'm not gonna go into whether that's good or bad, but that's just a very good example. Of um, hey dude, put that, put that back dude. Hey bro, come on, come on. Hey dude, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Another example of this happened earlier in the year, and you guys may have seen me post about this, but I believe it was Arizona. Um, the police were dispatched to a domestic disturbance call. They actually went to the wrong house. So again, this person in their house, not expecting anything to happen. Police show up, and again, he had a firearm in his hand that was visible to the officers. They engaged them. They actually got in a firefight between two officers, uh, the homeowner, and then because the wife had no idea what was going on, all she knew was that her husband went to the door and it was actually a scenario that's very similar to this with a foyer. Um, and then people started shooting at her husband. She started shooting at the door and then the police started engaging the wife. So these things can go wrong very quickly. So again, if it is a law enforcement or perceived law enforcement person at the door, do not recommend having a visible firearm at all. We can't tell whether their red and blue lights are running on their vehicles, but almost immediately as Dotson opens his front door, Officers see him draw a gun and they fire. <laughs> oh, hey, that's up! Shots fired, shots fired! Here's another angle. Hey, hey, hey. It's not clear whether Dotson ever heard police say who they were. Please don't. Miraculously, they don't hit her and she's not hurt. And since I'm recommending not having a visible firearm, what am I recommending? Well, um, a lot of folks do conceal carry at home. That said, if you're it's the middle of the night, you're sleeping, you're probably not concealed carrying. If you are, kudos to you. Um, but there's some systems that are out there that can help with this, even if you're wearing like boxer briefs or whatever gym shorts, um, something like this, which is a paddle style holster, which in general I don't recommend, but in this, in this particular scenario, it's a very good system to have. You can just tuck it in your waistband and not have to worry about a, you know, a strike, like for example, this obviously is a plastic gun, but if it was a Glock, a striker fired gun, you wouldn't want to just tuck it in your waistband uh, because you can have some safety issues with that. But something like this does give you an option to protect the trigger and it's a little bit safer. Additionally, if you wanted to go with something that is like a single action only gun or something that is a double action single action that's probably a little bit safer as well so in that scenario that is the option that i do recommend and uh, if you don't have that capability depending on however you're dressed i definitely recommend answering the door with the pistol concealed what do I mean by having your pistol concealed? Well, it's going to depend on how your house is actually set up. But in this scenario here, the door opens this way. Obviously there would be a threat that would be this way or law enforcement person, whatever the case may be. And basically right here behind this wall, there is a hard brick wall. So anything that I would expect um, in terms of opening the door for someone to be would be coming from this area. That's just sort of how the house is set up. Um, so basically instead of just 
just answering the door like this, obviously, which is a good way to get shot. Um, it's just having it like this, um, obviously putting your foot down so that way you can limit how much uh, your door is going to open. It could also acts as a door stop. And then at this point you can see if you didn't have any other means to see what was behind your door, you could see what was behind your door. And as we see, this is our person here, which is our possible threat to us. But there's a number of different ways that you can conceal the firearm that you have ready and on you, or of course, in that holster if you guys want to go that route as well. And um, after this, again, we're going to go through different scenarios with this door, with this possible bad guy. But with that, we're gonna close the video out here on YouTube and Rumble. Again, over on Mug Club, we're gonna go through scenario based, but I think that's going to give a lot of things for folks out there to think about. Many of you guys who are actually like subscribers here of this channel have probably already thought of a lot of these things, but I know there's a lot of people who have folks in their house who don't think of these things and just kind of going through this with them may help prevent something in the future. Um, for example, my wife, I'm sure has never thought of any of these scenarios despite the fact that we've discussed it before. <laughs> um, but on her own, that's just not something she would think of. And whereas someone like us, the, the home defenders, the primary security providers, it's something we do think of. So uh, I wanna make this video just to kind of throw it out there with some tips, some ideas, some concepts and then have you guys on your own develop how you would work through those different scenarios with your house, with where you live, with the weapons that you have available. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Again, over on Mug Club, we're gonna be going into scenarios. Code Mr. Guns and Gear will get you guys a free month at the website here on your screen of Mug Club, which has, of course, Steven Crowder, Nick DiPaolo, Brian Callen, lots of other folks over there besides me, most of them much, much funnier than I am because I'm not funny at all. Um, but a lot of great content over there that you just can't get anywhere else. So again, link to sign up will be down below. But with that, we'll close the video out. If you guys have questions, comments, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you guys are lighting up the comments down below. Uh, let me know over on my various social media accounts. Additionally, if you like this type of video and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, uh, you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This email goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email in it. So that way you guys aren't censored from my content. Additionally, if deals on things like this um, go on sale, the ammo, the optics, the accessories, the holster that we talked about earlier, if any of that stuff goes on sale, it will be in my daily deals email and that goes out every day as the name indicates. And uh, it has six or seven of the best deals that we find around the internet. If it's in that email, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day. And it also contains a good meme as well. So with that, that's all I got for you. Piss off YouTube.